What's up, everyone? Uh, I am here at the Short Box booth, the safest way to buy and sell graded comics. Uh, here with Gene, founder. Uh, let's take it back to the beginning. How did this whole journey start? One with Short Box, and then I want to hear about your journey and your like nerd origin story of how that all began. Awesome, and I love that you're calling it an origin story because that's exactly what it is. Uh, first off, myself, my co-founder BJ, we're huge comic book nerds. We're lifelong collectors been collecting and reading comics as early as I can remember. And so, as we got a little older, we really got into collecting comic books. We actually became comic book dealers ourselves for a number of years. We started Shortbox almost 10 years ago, just as a blog. This was a way for us to connect with the community, start building and fostering a community. We wanted to find our tribe on the internet to just connect with. But really, it was through that experience of being dealers, setting up at conventions, hitting the con circuit, building relationships with all the best dealers in the industry, chatting with the community, we just kept complaining over and over and over about how antiquated and how inefficient and just how poor everything is running. I mean, if you think about it, buying and selling comics hasn't evolved in 30 years since eBay was the last major shift, you know, in the early 90s when that came out. And a lot of it was just been done the same way for decades and decades and decades. And um, things had to change. You know, and so we kind of found ourselves complaining all the time. And both of us are technologists. We both work um, in Silicon Valley for tech companies. Um, my background is product and marketing. My co-founder is an engineer. And we realized that nothing would change unless we did something about it, unless we built the platform that we felt like needed to exist. Um, and so comics are super important to us. And, you know, you have all of these books on the wall. You come to cons. Dealers will have hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars of books on the wall. But the problem is that comic books aren't presented as fine art, as high-end collectibles, right? If people think of collecting comics, you're thinking of dank dungeons and basements and, you know, you know non-friendly comic book shops. And really, these are investment assets. Now, there's an entirely new generation of collector that's entering the space treating comics as investment assets. You know, so we really want to usher the industry forward, really take a technology-focused approach first to really just build a platform that we think needs to exist and obviously make it easy and safe because uh, those are the two most important things to us as collectors. I will say, I mean, there's a lot to unpack there because a lot of really good stuff in there. But I will also say, I know for personal experience, I was drawn because of the service. And so the tech is amazing. We're going to get into that too because you guys are absolutely pushing it much further, you brought up eBay and other places like that, than any other place I've ever seen. And that is like, I'm not just saying that, of course, but I mean it. But I will say, like, you guys have great people, uh, which is obviously a reflection on you and your co-founder and everyone that around, and not my, not myself not included, obviously. Uh, but how, how is that factored in? Because it really, I, I find that being in the industry for a long time, that's not by accident. Right. Like, right. you have amazing people that reach out some of the things you do that people don't aware of uh, that haven't been on downloaded the app or bought, like meeting people in the middle with like credits to kind of try to make a deal happen, that doesn't ha that's that's not normal. Right. Um, and so it's a special thing. How does that factor in? How, how has that been part of the strategy like over the ten years of, of putting all of this together? No, that's a fantastic question, and I'm really glad you said it's not an accident because that's exactly how I would describe it. You know, this community is not just a hobby to a lot of us who are a part of it. For a lot of us as collectors, this is something that we've been involved with our entire lives. It's a lot of folks identify with themselves as being collectors. You know, this is very personal to us. And as my girlfriend and I were building this business, uh, the people are everything, right? It, it's so easy for us to go out and find good technical talent. There's lots of talent in engineering and in marketing and product in the Bay Area, but we wanted to make sure the company still retains its roots down to the collector. So all of our employees, every single employee at Shortbox is a collector. We're all comic book nerds. And that reflects in the policies that we designed to make sure we protect our users and the features that we build that we think collectors need because we're building for ourselves. Like we're collectors ourselves. Like we're not out here coming from an outside background trying to build something for collectors as not collectors ourselves. Like we are our, our own customer, right? So that goes a long way. And so it's really important for us to just make sure that we keep the DNA of Shortbox really, really down to that core of like being a collector. And it's like, that's really everything. And like I said earlier, you know, being part of this community for over a decade, building relationships with dealers allowed us to launch this platform with traction right off the bat because we spent years building, fostering a community, building and fostering relationships. Um, it's not a massive community, right? So you have to make sure that you treat everyone with respect, treat everyone equally because you don't know who you're meeting with, who you're talking to. And that really comes down to everywhere from myself 
um, through the entire team, especially on the support side. We need to make sure that we're taking care of everyone because as collectors, I say this jokingly, but we're very skeptical people because we're used to being scammed. We've been scammed our entire collecting lives. I'm sure everyone has horror stories of being just, not just being scammed, but being treated poorly or rudely. Um, and, and that just shouldn't exist. That doesn't make any sense. And at the same time, you want to build a platform that can scale for a global audience for everyone, but you don't want to lose sight of that human element. That's always important. Like we're both software, like my, both of us, my California and I, we're software people. We built platforms at scale. That's what we built our careers on. So how do we build a comic book marketplace at scale, but still retain that human element? You know, that just ultimately comes down to our people and just making sure that when you're writing into our support team, you're actually talking to a collector. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're, you're trading questions and answers with someone who actually gets what you're going through. And so, you know, we empathize with everyone. It's not just, you're not just a number or a faceless customer. Like, it's like we're talking to ourselves, basically. Well, look, I get emails back. Like, it's crazy. Like, that's how it happened. Like, Mark, uh, like, oh, was one of the first people I spoke to. And it literally was like going back and forth. And that's how I got connected to Crow and then to you. Like, that, again, I can't stress that enough. That's not normal. It's, it is a special it thing. Be, it should be. Oh, of yeah, it of should course. be normal. It's, it's we don't want to make it just purely transactional either. I mean, these are comic books. These are things that we love. You know, and, and we all get excited when you get a book that you're hunting for. And, and we want to celebrate with our users. We want to celebrate with the community. And so that, that's, that's super important to us. So we got to talk, you said collecting yourself, obviously. Um, we're going to talk about some upgrades in a second, but first, I got to ask you, it's probably a personal question. Um, I didn't prep you for it, so it might be hard. I'm sorry. I'm sure you got some amazing books. Is there like a, a like a top, a, like a jeans top three or top five that you have that are in the PC that you're like, the ones that you're holding onto forever? Yeah, so uh, what I, I've collected every single genre you can think of. I mean, you're a collector, you know that your tastes change over time. Sometimes you're into this, you switch and start collecting why, but like I'm really into the golden age. I, I love golden age comics. I love LB Cole, um, Alex Schomburg, those old timelies, those World War II covers from Time of the Mag. Like I love those. I love pre-record horror, um, but just purely, coinciden purely coincidentally, my, my guy's Batman. It's, I, I, right before we, we, we turned the camera on, I was commenting on, I, I'm a Batman guy through and through. I've been a Batman fan my entire life. Um, so. You know, the crown jewel, if you will, of my collection is uh, is uh, Detective Comics 31. So it's it's the classic dark Gotham Gotham cover where he's on top of the hill. It's just um, that has been a holy grail of mine for years, and there's not many of them out there. They don't come up. They're really really expensive. So you know, I had to make the tough the tough choice, as all collectors do, where I had to sell a big chunk of my collection to be able to get it. But uh, I, I don't regret it one. I don't regret it one bit. That that that's something that you know I have that I'm going to cherish for a long time. That's amazing. And then Crow would kill me if I didn't talk about the street team because I think that's another thing that's unique and different. First of all, did you know that on TikTok? I was not aware of this until recently. If you put hashtag in, there's 150,000 videos that are hashtag shortbox street team. Wow. I, I didn't because I, I was doing using shortbox for the longest time, and then street team started popping up, and I'm like, this has become like a phenomenon. How has that been to see kind of that that grow where you're connecting with collectors? There's some amazing people that you're connected to, and just seeing this kind of really cool, unique phenomenon grow. And like you said, it, it's the definition of keeping the human element there. That, that's exactly what it is. It's we love this community, and we have this platform to lift up the community, whether it's through partnerships or working with other folks in the community. But as much as we wish we could hire everyone in this community to come work for us, and you know, we, obviously there's a lot of people who, who want to come work with us, but we can't hire everyone. But we started to think, you know, how can we get the community involved you know, in a more official capacity? You know, as much as we wish we could hire every single person who loves the brand and loves the company and loves the mission, um, one of them was, was building the street team. You know, like what are the things that we can do to support the community? We want to be able to send folks around the country to attend conventions. Um, there's a lot of budding content creators out there who just need a platform to share. There's so much knowledge among this community. Everyone knows something about something. And you know, really it was just about creating a platform for people to, to be involved with Shortbox and also sort of elevate their own brands as well. Um, and it's really win-win for everyone. It's, and it's been awesome just to see everyone kind of you know, carve out their own, their own audiences that way. That's awesome. And then we got to end by talking about some of the upgrades, because again, and I'm like a broken record saying that there's a lot of just amazing differentiators that you guys have. You just lost the, you know, the fair market value indicator, the green light, the red light, the yellow light. I think that is so smart and so unique and so different. And then before that, about a, a couple weeks before that was obviously the historical data. 
you must be getting amazing reactions from collectors who will like really appreciate this, but you're also becoming more than just a buying and selling platform. Like it's also like, it's, gonna, it's like a tool, a uh, historical tool. How has that been going? And then also just like, what's, what's next? Yeah, I mean, ultimately we are a platform. We're a marketplace for buying and selling comic books and we want to be the easiest and safest way to do that. And there's no way to make buying or selling easier than providing people with as much information as possible. Right, again, as a collector yourself, we do it all the time. There's a book that you want to buy, there's a price on it. You don't know if it's a good price, a fair price, or if it's overpriced, so what's the first thing you do? You go and you do research, you go to the various platforms, you look at the price, you come back, you decide if you want to buy it. There's, just a, there's a lot of separate platforms and services out there. So we really just want to make the buying decision and process as easy as possible for people. So a lot of it is just taking all the information that everyone already has access to and just making it available to everyone because that, and that also helps sellers, not just buyers on the seller side. You know, not every seller is, you know, a power seller or a full-time dealer. Some of them are just casual collectors who just want to move a few books so that they can buy other books. And, you know, they may not necessarily have access to the same level of information that we do. And we collect millions and millions of data points. Uh, so we have tons of amazing data and a lot of it is just being able to expose that data to all our users so they can make good buying decisions so they can know whether or not they should be able to submit an offer if they're not happy with the price for whatever reason or if it's underpriced, they want to buy it right away. And if you're a seller, to know that if you're pricing within range, if it's overpriced, if it's underpriced, and sometimes people just want guidance to do that thing. So with those features that you just mentioned, there's a lot more features coming out. Basically, you know, we're going to go and try and build a platform that's really robust and complete and whatever feature set that looks like, as long as it makes buying and selling just easier and more intuitive and faster and more efficient, um, that's how it should be. I, again, I've been collecting for you know, my entire life now and doing something as simple as buying and selling a comic book for whatever reason, like why does it have to be so complicated? Why does it have to be so just dangerous and full of fraud and scams and just complicated and convoluted and old school and manual? And so ultimately that's really our ethos and our mission. Just how do we take all of that and usher this industry really into the next generation? Because um, a platform like this needs to exist, it should exist. This is what's gonna allow us to make sure that this is something that exists for generations beyond us and we have to build for this new generation of collector also. That's awesome. I also love the passion, man. That was great. <laughs> well, hey, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure.